The story I am about to tell you is true. Many people who work in enclosed environments such as prisons and psychiatric hospitals have experienced the stories that patients tell them of bizarre things happening to them which cannot always be classified into the regular psychiatric frameworks which begs the question does science always have the answer or is there something far more serious going on here? A prominent psychiatrist warns there is an epidemic of demonic possession on the rise. Dr. Richard Gallagher claims that demonic possession is real and fallen angels target those who mess with the occult, says the professor who spent 25 years studying exorcisms. This story begins when I received a telephone call from the nursing agency to work at a psychiatric clinic for two weeks. The clinic was set in its own exclusive grounds with every conceivable and luxurious facility for the residents who voluntarily chose to admit themselves there. My duties would include observing the patients for any abnormal and strange behaviour and reporting back to the regular staff. Many celebrities would voluntarily admit themselves to the clinic to undergo detox and rehabilitation. And on the day that I started, the unit was on high alert as the most famous pop star in the world was due to be admitted later that day. Once I had taken report, I proceeded to visit each resident in their own rooms where they could freely talk to me about their fears and anxieties. Walking along the corridor, I heard the sound of a rock guitar coming from one of the rooms. It was Gary playing Jimi Hendrix with all his might. Soon after, Gary began to tell me his strange story. He told me he'd gone to a music festival with some of his friends. The candles were flickering and the incense burning. The night was hypnotic. His friends were chanting and invoking whichever god they wanted. But he didn't know how. So he began to say the Lord's Prayer and call on Jesus. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Very slowly a light began to appear in the tent and in that light Gary could make out 
a beautiful face. He heard a voice from that light which said to him, don't be afraid, everything is going to be all right. But soon after that, everything was not all right as Gary drifted into a spiral of depression and mixing with the wrong people. The experience always began the same way. A man would enter his house and claim he was the devil and that he was going to put an axe through his head. This happened repeatedly. The man would then simply vanish. I knew from reading the Bible, it's very clear when it says that we are contending against un invisible foes, evil entities, which can and do frequently invade and attack the mind and even can appear physical and it's only recently that um, the uh, medical profession, the sci in psychiatric cases, are beginning to listen and wonder, have we missed something in many cases? Of course, the whole objective with these entities, dark fallen spirits, is to completely send a person mad. It was at this point I wanted to help Gary at the risk of being fired by telling him that the answer is to be found in the Bible, which tells us quite clearly that the name and the authority of Jesus Christ is sufficient to get rid of any of these dark spirits and entities. Because the name of Jesus Christ is the highest authority in the universe and the very reason why he came to earth to destroy the works of the devil. This is where the process of Gary's deliverance began. After Gary had related to me his story, he believed he was not hallucinating, but the thing that came to him, he believed, was most definitely the devil. But nobody believed him, psychiatrists, counsellors. And uh, I then decided to risk my job by giving him some information. I was convinced would help him. I said, I believe Jesus Christ is the most powerful being in the universe and this thing that comes to you, be it Satan or be it something else, can be defeated by using the name of Jesus Christ against it. When I said that, his eyes lit up and he said, well, all the suggestions I've been given, what with medication, psychotherapy, hypnotherapy, that what you have just said makes complete sense to me. And so with that, I began to go through a process with him whereby he could be free of this demonic power because flesh cannot fight spirit. Spirit must fight spirit. If we in ourselves don't have the power to do it, then we call on a higher force and a higher power. In this case, it is Jesus. When you get discharged from the clinic and when you go home and if this thing comes in to your home and stands in front of you and threatens you, you say to it, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to leave and to never return. I command you to go in the name of Jesus. If you say that to it, it will eventually go because it's a force powerful than itself. You see, you have to remember that when Jesus came to this earth, the Bible says quite clearly that Jesus told us that he came to defeat the works of the devil. And this is why he was the only man who could ever deliver people from demons. And people became afraid of him. But he told us that 
But once he was dead and was resurrected again, rose to heaven, his followers would be given that same authority. They don't have the power, but because they're followers of Jesus, they simply use his name as a most powerful weapon to defeat all the strongholds of the enemy. All the dark forces can be beaten back simply by using the name of Jesus Christ. I'm not suggesting that anybody just uses the name of Jesus without being committed to serving him. I realized that there was a, a demon in this place. At one point, I felt like I should command the spirit to leave in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, you are going to leave. You're uninvited. And what you hear is what can only be described as a scream. I had just heard a demon react to the true, honest power of Jesus' name. She started realizing that there was power in Jesus' name. And he wasn't just, you know, a good guy that she should listen to, but that he was the Son of God. Because the Bible is quite clear that there is an incident in the book of Acts in the New Testament which says quite clearly that the name <clears throat> of the power of the name of Jesus went abroad. People heard that uh, that name could deliver people from demons and torment. However, there was an incident called the Sons of Sceva, and they went out as exorcists, delivering people of demons. But because they weren't committed to Jesus Christ, they just literally used his name, the demons in people would attack them and actually speak through these people and said, Jesus Christ we know, and Paul is the apostle they know, but who are you? And with that, these so-called exorcists were attacked by the people who were possessed of devil. It was about three years later when I was working at another hospital, this time back on a general hospital ward, and it was my lunch break and I was walking towards the dining room when I heard somebody say, hello. I turned around and I saw a young man standing there um, I didn't know who it was and he said well I can tell by the look on your face you don't know who I am you don't recognize me I said no no I, I don't he said do you remember working at the clinic and I said yeah and he said and do you remember I was the one and then he went on to relate his story and uh, the advice I gave him and he said when I got home he said I tried it he said, it works. He said, I couldn't believe it, it worked. He said, after I commanded that spirit to leave and to never return in the name of Jesus, it never returned. Oh, if only people knew this. Well, what's happening to you now? And he, he said, I've become a committed Christian. And he said, and I now have my own band. I play in the, the praise and worship team, guitar, naturally. I said, well, that is wonderful. And so, you know, we parted ways and um, I've got to say uh, that is a testimony that I will always cherish because it's true, it happened and it can happen to anybody watching this video who's having problems with demonic manifestations, obsessions, anything that where you feel you are not in control of yourself, you just use the name of Jesus Christ and uh, believe in him, believe in his power, because that's why he died, to save us from the power of the enemy. He died to save us and redeem us. To Gary, wherever you are, this was your story, and I have tried to faithfully recreate it here in this video.